Hi, this is Christina Lee. Thank you for joining again. About a month ago, I talked about five components of piano practice. And since then, I've been unpacking each component. And today's topic is improvisation. This is something that is near and dear to me. It's something that I do with all of my students. And even if I'm not with you, um, I hope I can help you to find your voice through improvisation. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is improvisation. Secondly, I'm going to talk about different ways you can start improvising on the piano, even if you have never done it. And thirdly, I'm going to give you tips on how to improve your improvisation. Just so you know, this is not jazz improvisation. This is just general improvisation. So what is improvisation? It's making stuff up. Musical improvisation is making stuff up musically, right? But I want you to think about improvisation more as listening exercise than doing exercise. You're listening to the sound, listening to the, what the instrument is doing, what music is doing. And you're asking yourself, where does the music want to go next? Is that it? Or is that it? We're following the music that we hear. And the more you do it, you start finding the things that you like. And that's how you cultivate your own musical voice. If you're just starting out improvisation on the piano, I suggest trying out improvisation in two different ways. One is just completely free. You don't think about scales, your finger numbers, or anything like that. You're just listening to the sound. And it could be just one sound. I'm just using white keys. So you can just use black keys. You can just experiment putting sounds together. I don't even know what that chord is. Sometimes just enjoy what is happening with the sound. It really helps actually to use the sustain pedal for this because it allows the sound to be sustained. Therefore, you, you have more time to listen rather than feeling like you have to move on from one note to another. So this is one way that I do improvisation with my students, very free. I often encourage my students to think of the piano as more of a sound effect instrument rather than you have to like come up with like solo piano or orchestral score. Just what is the sound? I, I love what um, John Cage said. He said he just loves sound. And I think there's a, something really beautiful in that, right? No matter where you are at in your piano journey, you can just love sound and you can make one single sound that's beautiful and go to another sound that's beautiful. And this is really the beauty and flexibility of music. Yes, if you have abilities, you can do amazing things, but even without those virtuosic abilities, you can do something that's still really beautiful and really meaningful. And here's a little bit of uh, self-promotion. This is why I uh, titled my course Simple and Beautiful Piano for Adult Beginners because I don't believe that you have to play something complicated to make something that's moving. The second way of improvising on the piano is a little bit more structured. And 
this is when you should have a little bit of experience or ability with your piano playing. Um, I talked about the five finger scales about a month ago and many people have watched it. And in that video, I said, well, if you know this, it opens the door, the gateway for music in a big way. And I'm gonna show you in the um, case of improvisation, how that applies. If you're just starting, um, I would say you can just start with black keys or white keys as starting point. And what you're gonna do with your left hand is to um, grab, I play the fifths. Okay, the fifth is when it's the first note and the fifth note of the five finger scales. Okay, this is a fifth, and I call that E flat. We always call it with the lower note of the fifth, G flat, A flat, and then this is D flat. And then you can start creating something that's melody driven with your right hand. When we say melody, it's single note because in, you know, we can only sing single note at a time, right? I can start with my right hand on three black keys. And maybe stay with that pattern and see how it goes with your, um, when you change your left hand to another chord, another fifth. Okay, and then maybe I'll go to another fifth, A flat. I'm gonna go back to the E flat. Gonna move my hand down. Just use the two black keys. You can do the same thing on the white keys, okay? We can we can grab the fifths with our left hand, that's C. Again, we um, call it with our lower note name, D. It's actually D minor, but don't worry about it. You don't want to analyze too much when you're improvising because that stops you from listening. If you listen, you'll learn actually quicker than trying to analyze and figure out what the rules are. You can learn the rules later. It's exactly the same as if you're learning uh, a language. Right. I had to learn English and, you know, sometimes I would ask my teacher questions about like some obscure thing and she'll be like, oh, you know, I can't explain that. Now I know why she couldn't, because there's so many things that's, that doesn't fall into the rules. But you understand when you become a user of that language, music is same when you keep playing and you start speaking that language you're gonna start understanding what works and what doesn't work, okay? So I would, I would say, yeah, yes, learn some basics, but don't get caught up with information. With the right hand, when we are working with the black keys, you see we only have five, um, five notes that are uh, unique names, right? And, and then they repeat. We have seven notes in the white keys. So that means there's going to be notes that are going to clash more. Don't think too much about it, but you're going to start hearing things that are that create more tension when you're just using all the white keys and with the fifth in the left hand. Something you can do if you have learned your five finger scale is like put your hands in the same position. This is C position. We always call it by the lower oh. note. OK, so all my fingers are like the position of playing the five finger scales and play the fifth again with your left hand use your sustained pedal okay and explore with the right hand again you can move your left hand to another fifth i'm just gonna go up a step
You can also try putting your left hand in like C position and something that works really well is if you put your right hand into um, the last note of the left hand position which is G, right? You're gonna put your thumb on G and your like, right hand is actually now in like G position, okay? This position works really well as well. Maybe I will go back to a C position. Now, how do you get better at improvisation? One is just exploring and listening like I talked about. But unless you develop your own skills, which is your just ability to play through your exercises and different pieces that other people have written, you will be limited like a child who's learning the language for the first time they just read a lot of things right they go to the library you know bring like 10 books and they just read it and that's very important because that's how you learn the vocabulary as well as the syntax how the language is used so this goes back to my point about five different components of practice if you just do one thing you will get better at it but if you can do several things, you will have a comprehensive understanding and progress as a musician. So I encourage you to improvise, but also work on your scales and learn lots of pieces. We're so lucky as pianists that there's so much literature that are available in every style and genre of music. If you like this, video and this content and my style of teaching resonates with you please subscribe if you're new to piano or newish to the piano please check out my course simple and beautiful piano for adult beginners and one more thing i would love for you to subscribe to my newsletter and um, it the link is below and when you go to my newsletter subscription link I would love for you to tell me what you're interested in learning about so that I can be creating the contents that um, meet your needs and I will make sure to inform you when I have the content that um, matches your interest. See you next week.